Hi everyone. Before we start off, I will just remind you once again that a small solisti concert done by our speaker Nemanja uh, will begin at 11 a.m. upstairs by the Heap Space booth. It is, the, uh, it is to support the cause of uh, uh, children who fight against cancer, so there are two donation boxes. We'd like you to join and help out as much as you can. Nemanja will also match your donations until he goes bankrupt. Okay, we have Kaz Sato here with us. Uh, he is from Google Cloud. He's a developer advocate. Kaz, what is a developer advocate exactly? It's like an evangelist for developers. Uh -huh. Evangelist. So oh, evangelist, we advocate okay. for the developer community. Beautiful. Okay, yeah. so uh, we will hear more about deep learning and, uh, 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 and its real life application, real business applications, that is. Yeah. So take it away. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time for my session, Real World Machine Learning with TensorFlow and CloudML. And uh, this is my introduction. So I'm developer advocate. So as I mentioned, it's like an evangelist for developers. I usually attending many meetups and events like this one, talking about the products uh, and technologies from Google, focusing on the machine learning technologies from uh, Google Cloud Platform, GCP. I have been working at Google Tokyo office for over eight years and uh, working as a developer advocate for like uh, four or five years. So uh, before get into the details of the technologies, I usually start with the, uh, what's the meaning of the AI or ML or the neural network? How many people are actually using machine learning already? Not so many, like uh, less than five people. Thank you. Yeah, this is the, uh, maybe the great introduction for you who haven't tried machine learning yet and wondering what's the AI and what does it for you. So I usually say that the AI doesn't, AI stands for the artificial intelligence, but AI doesn't have any intelligence for you. Because usually if you hear the word intelligence, you may expect something like the common sense or self-consciousness consciousness running in the uh, uh, human brain, but uh, current AI technologies haven't achieved that level of technology yet. It's not an intelligence. It's actually a function that converts one data into another, that's all. But we are trying to make this smarter, smarter IT system. So uh, until now, the IT development has been all you know, controlled and managed by the human brains. The human defines the specifications and human lies to all the logics. But now we are seeing uh, totally a new programming paradigms that let computer decide what's the rules, what's the patterns to process the data. And we are using machine learning to do that. Machine learning has been out there for like uh, uh, 30 or 40 years already. But recently we are seeing the booming or the breakthrough of the machine learning, especially in the area of the neural network as you might heard about deep learning, that stands for, that means the deep neural networks. The neural network has here more than three layers in the, as the hidden layers. So at around 2012, we are seeing a breakthrough of the deep learning or deep neural networks happen in the area of machine learning. And that could be used for the uh, building your so-called artificial intelligence or AI application. But I always say AI is just an the subset of the all applicable uh, applications for the machine learning. So even for the, uh, the traditional web developers or any programmers could use the machine learning for their everyday programmings, uh, where you are not building the, any AI the applications, but machine learning is still a very powerful new uh, programming paradigm for you. Why is that? Uh, let me use some ex uh, example. In this case, the, uh, the developer is de de trying to define um, rules or business logic for the detect the activities of the user. Uh, the user uh, may be carrying some smartphone applications so that you can detect the uh, speed, movement speed of that user. So you can define the specification like if that person's movement speed is less than four kilometer per hour, four kilometer per hour maybe he or she is walking. If it's more than that, maybe the user is running. It's, if it's over 12 kilo, kilometer per hour, maybe uh, the user must be biking. But if you have the new, uh, new user who is doing this, how your program code will respond? 
your program code doesn't expect this kind of the activities because it's not defined in the specifications or requirement. So in this case, the, your system doesn't work and uh, not flexible enough to adopt the new part data pattern you're, you're finding in the new user. Instead, at Google, we are changing the way of the programming or defining the business logic. Rather than having humans define all the specs, we're letting computers to find what's the best possible rules or patterns or definitions or specifications based on the patterns we can find from the uh, training data. So rather than starting with the writing our own program code, we are gathering tons of data, the big data, like the, uh, all the uh, positions data from GPS or the sen uh, data from the motion sensors or any possible data, and let the computer find what's the, uh, the different patterns you can see in walking, running, biking, and golfing. So this is not about the artificial intelligence. It, this is more about the paradigm shift of your, the, of your way of programming. This is another example. Usually, if you want to make a converter that converts from the, uh, the Fahrenheit degree to the Celsius, uh, from the Celsius degree to Fahrenheit degree, usually you have to define that this kind of the specification and write it down with the Java or the Python or Go language. But with machine learning, you don't have to do that. You don't have to define the exact specifications. Instead, you can just dump all the training data to the machine learning algorithms so that computers works for you, just like an, in the calculator in your office environment. So you can say that machine learning is a new the calculator you have for the, the web programmers or any programmers in 20, 21st centuries. So with the machine learning, you can also do things like this. These are all the different images of the maps. But <laughs> if you, uh, you're carefully looking at that, this is not a map. Actually, this is a dog called sheep dog. And uh, this one, this is hard one, but actually this is a dog. Even humans can not tell the difference between the dogs and mobs in these examples. And it's impossible to define a specification of your IT systems. That tells the difference. What are the rules to classify these images? But deep learning can do. By, uh, actually, by using the Cloud Vision API provided by Google Cloud, you can easily tell the difference at high accuracy, but not 100% accuracy. Just like humans, the AI does make mistakes. So you have to think about, well, this machine learning model could make a mistakes like a, a few times or, uh, for uh, 1,000 1, images, but this can definitely increase the, the productivity of the workers if you apply these technologies to a certain uh, the use cases, things like that. So you always have to think about the trade-offs uh, of the productivity or, or business benefit you could get with the machine learning. Uh, versus the, uh, the error rate or the accuracy you would get from the actual production system. How the machine learning works, especially the neural network, as I mentioned, there's no intelligence inside it. It's not a magic. It's just a function. But uh, it, it's the function that can learn from the uh, training data you put. So with the uh, tens of thousands of images of cats or dogs, uh, somehow the functions can uh, extract the patterns from the uh, pixel images to output the, uh, the some vectors with the labels such as dog or cat or human, uh, so that you can use the function to predict whether, to classify whether the image is a cat or a dog. And inside it, it's actually doing a very simple mathematics. Actually, it's just a bunch of multiplication and summations, and that's, a, that's it. This neural network algorithm is invented in the 1940s, and that is inspired by the uh, behavior of human, biological human neurons. We have like a, I don't know how much, how many is it? It's like a 20 billion neurons inside the human brain. I don't know. Anyway, it's just a cell. Cell that takes the electric signals from the other cells, and uh, we have uh, massive neural networks inside between those neurons. And uh, the original idea is trying to simulate the behavior of the neurons by the multiplying the weights, the so-called parameters, with the input data, and take a summation. And if the summation overs a certain threshold, 
then that cells, that neurons, could be excited. Just like humans do, you know, all humans have many neurons to, to make, a busy, uh, make a decision. For example, if you're uh, uh, watching some uh, light fire, and if you're smelling any of uh, the smokes, and if you're hearing the, some noises that fire makes, you can make a decision that, oh, it's fire, uh, your house is on the fire. This is uh, just like that. So the neural networks can make a decisions based on the input data that is filtered by those different weights. So some data would be ignored, or some data would be uh, uh, used for uh, making a decision. So for example, uh, by using the neural network in the machine learning, it can easily be trained to, to classify these data points as uh, blue points, or in a blue group, or the orange group. It's a so-called double spiral data pattern. So let's take a look at the, uh, the video. So this is the neural networks. It has one, two, three, four layers. This is the final neuron. And now it starts training by taking all the existing training data. This was blue, this was orange, this was blue, and things like that. So by keep training the neural networks, it tries to find the best combination of these different weights to extract the patterns that can crash by uh, new data points could be uh, in a blue or orange pattern. So as you can see, uh, it is trying to achieve the as same accuracy as humans provide. And uh, actually, the each cells, the neuron, is doing very simple things. This particular neuron just uh, draw a straight line here and crash by whether a new dot is in the upper layer or lower. This neuron is dedicated to crash by whether a new data point is in a left or right. So each neuron does a very simple things, but just like the human's new, new, neurons, if you have millions or billions of neurons in a single neural network, then it can provide a very complex, sophisticated uh, uh, the, uh, information processing inside it. And you can apply this, the neural network algorithms, to any kind of the data you have. For example, image is the most famous use cases. You can take the, uh, the uh, pixel images and convert them into a matrix like this, from 0 to 1.0, they're all represented in the, in the real numbers. And let the neural network, what are the important pixels you have to uh, watch for? To classify those, ima those images as the digit one or digit eight or digit four. Obviously, there's the uh, irrelevant pixels. For example, the images right here, those can be ignored. So the weights for those pixels could be the something like uh, somewhere around z zero. So instead, by training the neural networks, you can let the computer, the neural networks, understand what could be the important features of, uh, out of the, uh, those data. So that you can train the neural networks to get the high accuracy on the handwritten uh, the, uh, image, uh, digit uh, image recognition. This is another animation that tells you how the neural networks works for the image recognition. So you can actually understand that without any the mathematical formula, uh, actually. As this animation tells, it's just a matching between the parameters, sets of parameters, or you can call it as a filter for pixels, uh, making a matchmaking between the filters and input data. And if you get the, uh, the, uh, the best set of parameters that fits uh, with the uh, input data, then that must be the, the, uh, the result. That must be the prediction result for this image recognition. So it's very simple mechanics working inside the machine learning. But if you have like a tens of the layers inside it, very interesting thing it can, it can be happening inside it. For example, this is an so-called Inception version 3 that is developed by Google for the, uh, the image recognition system. And that is trained to recognize the, the edges and patterns of the objects or colors in a picture for the, uh, the uh, lower layers. In the middle layers, those neurons uh, are trained to recognize the animal eyes or animal nose. And if you go to the higher layers, it got much smarter and smarter. 
uh, some neurons can recognize there's a dog snout here or cat leg here. And eventually, you would have a neurons that are as smart as humans. So it can recognize laboratory retriever is here or tiger cat is here. But everything is just a conversion or a, a transformation of the information, not intelligence, actually. It's just a function, one big function that converts the pixel images to the labels. This is another video that tells how the deep learning models is recognizing the world. So by clicking one of those, the uh, bunch of the neurons, uh, you can visualize why the, this particular neurons is excited by watching a part of those, the input data. For example, the, this neuron is looking at those, the hairy, curly hairs. And these neurons decide that it's the head of the laboratory retriever because it has the curly hair and this shaped uh, as the, uh, the dog's no, dog, the head. So that's how it works. It's just trying to extract the certain different features from the input data. So we have been using these technologies for implementing our different services, including these or smart devices, uh, or the Google search have introduced the, uh, the deep learning based algorithms for the ranking of the search result. Uh, since 2015, and almost all Google services has been using deep learning uh, for productions, uh, including Google Photos, or Gmail has now the smart reply features, so uh, there will be uh, three options to reply each email thread that is uh, working with the neural networks as for the natural language processing. And there's also smart compose feature uh, lets you uh, suggest you the, uh, the sentence that you would write in the email with that person or that uh, the thread. And Google Translate, uh, as you know, has increased its accuracy by using the neural machine translation. And now we are trying to expose the share this power of the machine learning with developers uh, with the Google Cloud platform. So we have provided the uh, many different the APIs or services or solutions that powered with the Google's AI technologies already. And uh, for example, Google's AI building blocks, th those are the, all the APIs that pre-made for the uh, visual recognition or, or, or voice recognition or translation and so on. So for using those building blocks or APIs, you don't have to learn anything about machine learning at all. So if your problems or business requirements could be solved, uh, with those APIs, then you can just go there and use it. That's the easiest way. For example, if you have the, uh, uh, any images you want to recognize, you can just go to the product page of the Cloud API, Cloud Vision API, where anybody can try out the Vision API without any sign up or paying any money or credit card, or credit card registration. You can just upload the, the uh, image of the sheepdog, then you get the label such as dog or mammal. Or there are some other interesting APIs that allows you to try out the speech recognitions on the fly. You can choose any language you want and speak to your laptop so that you should return the, the recognized result within like a point, a point 0.5 second. It's real time recognition using the, the Android devices and so on. And if you got the uh, converted text, you can copy and paste it to another API called Natural Language API that allows you to uh, deep, dive, uh, deep dive into the, uh, the meanings of the, the, those natural languages and sentences. Press the Analyze button so you would get the uh, ent entity analysis results that shows any uh, ent name of the entities like locations or companies or human, uh, or the sentiment analysis just that, that shows the uh, sentiment scores, or the syntactic analysis to get the, uh, the part of speech in a sentence and the relationship with, with, between those words. But these are all the APIs and pre-built machine learning model. So not all the uh, problems could be solved with those pre-made things. But uh, before we having the, uh, the new product called Cloud AutoML, there was a huge gap between those APIs and building uh, your own machine learning from scratch. Because to build customized machine learning model, you have to hire some data scientists, ML engineers who understand all the uh, mathematical formulas, equations, and uh, build an IT systems with another 
uh, group with the DevOps people. We call it as a ML ops, the DevOps for ML. Who understand the machine learning still can build the best platform, scalable platform, the uh, machine learning models and the inferences. It takes tens of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars instantly. So we wanted to fill that gap and uh, wanted to automate a major part of the machine learning development process. That is the uh, Cloud AutoML project. So in the past, you have to go through all the different phases of the machine learning development, like uh, you have to collect all the training data. Train with that training data, we can do anything with machine learning. So training data collection and pre-processing, you have to design how many layers, uh, or, or, uh, or maybe you can usually you use the, uh, anything other than the neural network. Maybe you could use the, uh, the random forest or the, uh, the GBGT or any other, the algorithms could fit uh, to the, uh, the solution. Uh, anyway, you have to define the model uh, design and you have to do the hyperparameter tuning. This is uh, one of the hardest part. And also you have to evaluate the, the model performance continuously. You have to deploy on your uh, the scalable machine learning DevOps environment and keep updating the model uh, by continuous training. So this is expensive process. So we, we wanted to automate everything. All you have to do with the Cloud AutoML is to upload the, all the, the training data with labels uploaded to the Google Cloud Storage and press the training button and wait for 12 hours or 24 hours. Let me show you some example video uh, to, sh to show how the automated vision can work for you. So uh, it provides the training and deployment and also it provides the API, scalable API that for the prediction uh, for using the, your trained machine learning model. And all you have to do is to collect all the data. For example, if it's uh, just uh, uh, tens of thousands of images, you can package them as a zip file and upload it on the uh, UI of automated vision. Or if you have many of them, you can upload to the Google Cloud Storage and check at those images on the, uh, the UI with those thumbnails. Then you can go to the train tab and press the train button. And in this case, uh, it has selected the edge model. That means the model can be downloaded to your smart smartphones applications or the embedded systems like a Raspberry Pi. And after the training, you would get the report that says the accuracy or performance of your model. For example, suit pictures should get the 97% accuracy. And then you can download the model for the edge devices. Uh, you can export the data, the .tf light file, to the Google Cloud Storage and download it. And all you have to do is to build the edge device that runs that model at the edge side. So for build this the Raspberry Pi, you can you could use the Raspberry Pi three or Raspberry Pi four. And the important thing is to use this USB things that is called HDPU accelerator. Uh, this is an AI process uh, Google has developed. So by putting those HTPUs, the, it can accelerate the performance of the uh, inference for like uh, uh, 20 to 40 times faster than the usual uh, Raspberry Pi CPU. And then go to the uh, HTTP website and downloading the SDK. That should be finished within like, like uh, 15 minutes. And the API is very simple. Uh, the, with Python, you can uh, load the, all the library and load the model file and pass the images, and that's it. So you would get the, uh, the uh, prediction result within a very short time period. So these are the labels. That means per shirt at 84% uh, score. So in this, in this case, I have built my own uh, self-checker uh, self systems for the, uh, the dry cleaners. I have used right about 50,000 images of different the clauses and wares. And actually it took a couple of days, like a two or three days. Actually I have spent many days for building this UI with the old <laughs> the, uh, Python the API. So it's so easy to build your own customized model by using the AutoML. And some uh, the hackers uh, were playing with the AutoML vision for a while. This is a ramen bowls you can see. And actually this is a, a ramen bowl from the uh, 
shop called Ramen Jiro. It's a, one of the most popular ramen franchise, franchise in Tokyo. They have 41 different branches in Tokyo area. And actually, these pictures are coming from the, the different branches. And the automated vision model can tell the difference of these ramen balls by looking at those vegetables, toppings, or the, the way they cut the meats. At 95% accuracy, there are 45 different branches by looking at those balls. You can see that the shape of the ball or the color of the table are the same because they are in the same franchise. So only the features, they can, the, the deep learning model, is the, uh, the toppings and the meats. But still, the automated vision can get the 95 accuracy for whether it's this particular ball is made at this particular shop or things like that. This is impossible by humans already. And the Mercari is the most popular setting up in Japan. They are just like the uh, eBay in Japan. They are trying out the uh, automated vision for uh, the, the brand suggestion for the, sh the sellers. So if you, the sellers upload any product images, it can, say, it, it can show, oh, it must be a Gucci bag or it must be the Chanel bag or things like that. The, another latest products we provided with the AutoML is the AutoML tables that works for the, uh, the, the structured uh, data, uh, tables in the, the databases. And uh, again, you have to, in, in the past, you have to go through all the different the processes with data scientists. The exporting the data from the, the, uh, the, the uh, database table and the build your own model, and it, that takes a long time. But we have automated that. For example, this is another, uh, this is a uh, Kaggle competition, uh, the problem, where the, they let the uh, human data scientists to build a model for predicting the uh, setting price for the Mercari, the comp uh, Mercari setting app. Based on the, the features such as the name of the product or item conditions or item descriptions with the natural language processing. And what the performance of the, those auto ML tables uh, versus human data scientists. These are all the scores or error rates from the old year, over 1,500 the teams who have uh, participated in this particular competition. And uh, this is the top number one uh, winner of the competition. So this is the lowest error rate they got. And ultimate tables couldn't get the, the highest result for this competition, but it wasn't so bad. By spending 12 hours for the training with the training data, they were able to get like a, the, uh, the score that is in the top 500 teams. So it's just like a senior data scientist you have hired just by clicking the training button. And this costed only like $300. So by spending $300, you can hire the senior data scientist. Uh, yeah, there's an, any other things more things you have to solve with the human data scientists, but the, the particularly the building the model, training the model, those kind of things could be replaced with the auto, M, auto ML for major part. GNP Segros is a, a, the one of the most traditional major insurance company in South America. They have tried out auto ML with the, their existing database system. Uh, they wanted to uh, decrease the uh, payment for the healthcare fraud rent and they have been using their own existing algorithms to detect whether uh, on some, um, not invoice, uh, it's a payment requ request from the, uh, those patients could be a fraud or not. And by trying out the automated tables, they were able to get the 20% to 30% the effectivity improvement uh, compared to the, the older algorithms. And this is a really, really a huge impact for the business because they are paying like over uh, $680 million per year for the insurance payment. So even the 1% the improvement could be a significant the benefit you, you could get. So the, those automated technologies has been developed for the uh, new machine learning users, people who haven't machine learning the expertise but want to get the power of the machine learning. TensorFlow, uh, maybe I, I suppose many of you have heard of the name, it's a design for the machine learning, the specialist, the data scientist, that has uh, open source in 2015. It's uh, developed by the Google AI team for developing our internal the AI products, and also used by the many different the enterprise customers. And the latest news about the TensorFlow uh, is the uh, TensorFlow Lite, which is the uh, 
the subset, small version of TensorFlow that is the, uh, the optimized for the uh, smartphone applications or embedded systems. For example, recently we have supported the uh, GPUs in the smartphones with the TensorFlow Lite. So rather than using the, uh, the CPUs in smartphones, it's, it gets much, much faster by using the GPUs. You can get 5.5 times faster performance. Actually, it's uh, 15 milliseconds for the uh, uh, crash pine image with the mobile net mo model. And recently, we have announced the much faster options that is for the DSP or digital signal processor. Digital signal processor is a kind of traditional circuitry you have in the, the every smartphones. And Qualcomm's DSP is in the uh, Pixel phones and the, the uh, any phones with the, the Qualcomm Snapdragon chipset. And that has been used for the, uh, the uh, audio signal processing or vis vis uh, vision processing traditionally. And by using the DSP, you can even get the, the better performance than the uh, GPU. It provides the 13.8 uh, uh, times faster uh, inference speed. So let me show some example of this kind of the TensorFlow light acceleration. This is a sample application called Dance Like, where the the application shows the uh, dancers playing, and it's a very simple game. You, the player, you, uh, will be same, uh, dancing the same dance as the professional dancer. It's a very simple game, but the technology inside it is very sophisticated and advanced because it does the uh, real-time segmentations on the body images. As you can see, there's a different colors on the uh, head and body and arms. It is so-called segmentation, and one of the latest uh, the technologies you got with the deep learning research. And nobody, uh, usually researchers are using the huge desktop GPU machines to do, this, to do this kind of segmentations, but now you can use the GPU inside the smartphones to, to do that in real time. And another application is the smart mirror for the cosmetic uh, the products. Uh, this is not an application. This is a physical mirrors product. And mirror has a, a Linux called Care OS uh, inside it uh, with the uh, TensorFlow Lite model running inside it. So the model can recognize the human face and the direction and all the, uh, the landmark points. And also it does the segmentation as well. So you can easily change the color of your hair in real time by looking at the smart mirror. And uh, these are the use cases of the GPUs inside smartphones or the Raspberry Pi or Linux, embedded Linux. And another interesting technology is HTPU. As I mentioned, this is an AI processor built by the Google. With HTPU, you can get 42 times faster uh, pr uh, classification speed compared with the, the usual GPU. So that this could be applied for the real-time use cases where people really wanted to uh, identify some object in the images in real time, uh, 40 frames per second, like uh, pedestrians and cars or signals. Those could be identified within like uh, five milliseconds or 10 milliseconds, it's real time. Okay, uh, lastly, let's look at the uh, interesting use cases of those the machine learning APIs, TensorFlow, and the AutoMLs. QP is one of the major food manufacturers in Japan. They have been using the uh, TensorFlow in productions for finding the, uh, the bad potato cubes on the belt conveyors. The, uh, they have uh, launched the production systems for over one year. So the, those baby foods with the potato cubes in, with their factories are all checked by the deep learning models uh, in the, with the TensorFlow. And also 20th Century Fox, uh, they have been using the uh, deep learning TensorFlow model for the marketing research. Uh, they have many movie trailers uh, for different new movies, and they are extracting the different features from those the trailers by using uh, the video, the image models, the recognition of models for the video. So the result is that you can get the high accuracy on predicting uh, what set of movies could be seen by a, a, a certain kind of the users. Uh, these, uh, I think these green ones are the actually matched result. And uh, the left one, left list is the actual movies seen by our user. And the right one is the predicted list of the, the, the movies. 
So they are using these, this kind of the predictions uh, for the marketing analysis. Nissan is the largest mail order service in Japan. Uh, they have been using the, the, the ordinary the collaborative filtering recommendation for, uh, for their website, but they have changed the deep learning model to recommendations. That actually takes the uh, visual features, colors or styles or shapes of the actual the clothing and the wares, and also the language features from the product description. So the model uh, understands what the product looks like and how the product should be used in different the use cases or the situations, whether it's a formal wear that could be fitted uh, suitable for the, uh, the ceremonies or the, the, the wedding and so on, or the, some items should be, could be used by the women's or men's, uh, rather than you know, taking a look at the, uh, the, 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 the purchase history in the past. This is a, a project called Global Fishing Watch that is tracking the uh, GPS positioning of the, all the vessels or ships in different oceans. They are gathering 200,000 uh, GPS positions of the different ships in real time and collecting them, uploading them onto the Google Cloud Storage and using TensorFlow to extract certain movement patterns. And uh, by watching the movement patterns, they can tell the whether uh, it is a sh doing uh, some fishing or not, trailing, trawl fishing or long line fishing or passing fishing, so that you can uh, prevent the overfishing in certain area of each ocean. Lastly, I'd like to show a video of the uh, use case of the TensorFlow by the dry cleaning shop owner. Uh, this man in Japan, he is an owner of the, the, uh, like a three or four small dry cleaning shops in a very small town in Japan. And he had no experience on programming at all. But because his town is so small, all the people he can hire for his store is uh, senior people or people who doesn't know much about the ITs. So he started the learning the Python programming from scratch five or six years ago. Uh, to automate everything for those the senior people operators. And then he also started learning about TensorFlow from scratch and spent like two or three years and collected over 50,000 images of th those different clauses and the wares. The, actually, the demonstrations I have shown for the AutoML visions, that was the, using the training data uh, provided by him. But before, that was before uh, we got the automated tape, uh, automated vision. So he learned the TensorFlow. He used the TensorFlow by himself and got no help from the systems integrator or vendor at all. So it costed so low. He only spent like uh, uh, hundreds of dollars. So point here is that the, any single developers or even hobbyists or individuals can start learning, can get started uh, with the, uh, the TensorFlow, open source based free technologies for learning the uh, machine learning or AI. And maybe you can pay a small amount of money for the Google Cloud technologies for you can expedite or shorten the time for the, uh, the development. But anyway, the Google really wanted to empower the, the developers with the uh, paradigm shift of the programming with machine learning. So that's it. Thank you so much. <laughs>